Good evening, members of council, staff, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting of Committee of the Whole to order. It's been moved by Councillor Durley that the agenda for the July 6, 2015 regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adopted. Are there any changes, additions to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest. That is, any conflicts of interest. Do any members have any conflicts that they need to disclose at this time? There are no conflicts. Can that be so noted in the minutes? Now we move to corporate services. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak that Committee of the Whole receive the corporate services June 2015 departmental report for information. Questions, comments regarding that monthly report? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, um, an item 13, why find Peace Park? Just wanted some clarification with, regret, with regard to the number of clients accessing, accessing Wi Fi. The numbers there doesn't indicate whether it's for the month, the year, the day. I wonder if you could get some, some clarification with regard to that. I believe it's from the month. Uh, Just the month? Madam Treasurer? Yes, it is. Thank you. That, that, that's a heck of an increase, too. Mm -hmm. Anyone yeah. else to the Wi Fi yeah. issue? I did hear from one business during supper market saying that to get Wi-Fi they had to kind of go somewhere else. So it sounds like you're looking at that. Okay. <laughs> they had to move over somewhere and stand on a whatever. So okay, thank you. Um, I think I have to. At others to items in the treasurer's report. Uh, Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is that inclusive of 5.1.2? Or it is. Yeah, both are together. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Through you, if I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask. Regarding um, contract uh, 2015 CS04 uh, respecting uh, e solutions and e procurement, I note that there was a, uh, a proposal put forward based on a fee for service as opposed to a capital expenditure. I, I wondered, was there consideration given to that and, and why was that not adopted versus? are having to own and most likely pay licensing fees going forward. What was the trade-off? I just treasure. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there, was, uh, the, there was no fee for service. The, the company hosts the, uh, the, the application itself. There's no product uh, that we were able to just purchase and have it uh, hosted on site and then uh, walk away from the company. There's, there's always a, a mechanism for them to uh, continue to have the license <coughs> and continue to have the hosting privileges. So perhaps I'm misreading so this, uh, Madam Chair. probably a miscommunication. I apologize. I didn't have a chance to really go through that report uh, as I was on vacation last week with fine de uh, detail, but um, it would be a misclarification because all of the presenters that sent us in uh, information um, all opted with the same hosting and us by having to buy, pay for licensing. Oh, okay. So, so just for clarity then, if I may, Mr. Mayor, yep. follow up. So the Bravo Solutions shows no capital but charges a fee from the vendor side of 300 per bid and 750 annually. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Bravo um, is, is an organization that does not charge the, town, the municipality per se on the use of the application, but it charges the vendor every single time they pull a document, every single time that they want to um, be a member for the year. So the cost to the vendors is is quite um, expensive to them and one of the th mechanisms we wanted is to have customer service where our vendors were not paying to pull for documents from us so instead of them making their money off of us on an annual basis they make their all their money off of all our vendors and we risk losing a lot of those vendors just because of that as well so that was something that we we did have them in house we ha had them explain it to us and the burden on to the vendors locally here like somewhere in Toronto that that might be acceptable here it would not play out well Okay. So, so, so it doesn't really meet the basic criteria of, of the, uh, the, the bid. basic criteria, but we okay. did bring them in and have them do a presentation to us just so we can get some further clarification. But one of the things when we went to the vendors was that they do not like to have to pay to pull a document to yeah, do a bid at, at the town. Okay. Thank you, okay. Councillor. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing that clarity, and and I, I think that was a good decision. Um, just for a little bit of clarity going forward. So with the e-solutions, the 16850, is that a one-time fee or is that a fee that repeats going forward on an annualized basis or is there a licensure fee or a user fee attached to that? Okay. Madam Treasurer. 
that's a one-time fee for the software setup training program and so forth. There's about 2,500, I believe it is. That's an annual licensing fee. For that. That. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Others to the tenders, bids? Others to other portions of the treasurer's report? Um, three things, I guess, real quick. Um, and maybe you can just address them in, our, in your next report, Madam Treasurer. Uh, the first is there's been discussion previously about Wi-Fi in Fenwick. Um, perhaps you can talk about that when that's coming uh, in your next report. Um, I'd like to know about the billing of municipal drains that was in your last report. And then um, the other, I guess this is a question really, about the financial statements. So I think you have those, do you have those now and can we consider them at our June 20th, or July 20th meeting? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, just on the Wi-Fi in Fenwick, it has uh, been purchased. It's, uh, I believe, is in the process of being installed. Okay. So that'll Good. come on the report. We'll start adding that as um, providing information. Um, with respect to the financial statements, uh, the auditors do, uh, have input the NPEI. Uh, we are waiting for some information from WSIB, which we have a hard time getting, so they don't want to do the final financial statements until okay. they've cleared off all of the uh, the liability claim, potential claims and so forth. So I'm hoping that they'll come for the July 20th meeting. Okay. And what was the other, the other one was the billing of municipal drain work. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we're in the process of doing that right now. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anything further from councillors? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Now we move to Public Works and Utilities. Been moved by Council. Have the Committee of the Whole receive the report Bullards on downtown, in downtown Fawn Hill and the Committee of the Whole approve staff's recommendations to make the listed improvements in principle so that staff may investigate costing options based on the recommendations in effort to seek budget approval to implement these uh, improvements in 2015 <coughs> or to incorporate them into the 2016 proposed operating budget. Questions, comments? Very comprehensive report, answered mm -hmm. all the questions I had. Councillor Papp? No, I'm not just, saying you may not have questions, I apologize. Uh, question, I, I, I just, the way you read it is, if you can do it in 2015, you will do it. Can you make those improvements? Is that what you're saying? Ms. Clementio? Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. We'll have to do some more investigating. I want to know we were on the right path here, if the right. concepts are good, if we can do this with the ballers we have and reinstate them without additional costing, absolutely. If not, we'll be back here asking for money this year or put it into next year. Okay. Okay. Long Thank time you. coming. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it has been. Anything further? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. And we look forward to that additional information. The next report has been moved by Councillor Kersey. The Committee of the Whole received the issue summary report regarding culverts, background maintenance and replacement for information. Questions, comments? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and through you to the, uh, to the director. Thank you for the report. It's a good report, very clear. Um, had information, but some of the information is, is troubling, and that is with respect to uh, the, the concept of of using culverts to stage the flow of water across the, the town. That is to strategically look at how to slow down the flow of water to prevent flooding downstream. And I understand the concept. <clears throat> Trouble is that that seems to be happening in a number of areas in ways that, uh, that are unplanned. Um, I can think of several locations, but, but one in particular where um, Yes, the, the, the culvert is slowing down the flow, but behind that is a yard that gets flooded very, very badly to the point where lawn furniture and that sort of stuff flowed around. Uh, in the height of the, uh, the worst of the rains last year, uh, we had flooding of, of, of a basement. Um, so that stuff still happens, and, and of course the size of the culvert may be one that is recommended by uh, the various authorities that you you cite within the report so but but you do also indicate um, uh, that that in in doing this kind of planning and watching where the water goes that that there might be some need to uh, to to do this in a planned way 
So I'm just wondering what, uh, what, what the thinking is with re regard to, to, to going forward. Where we'd have culverts that are in fact slowing the water down as perhaps they ought to in order to prevent damage downstream. Do, what do we do to make sure that the water behind the culvert piling up is in fact being contained within areas that, that are planned to, to keep it and not causing, causing damage in, in, in some of the areas where that in fact is occurring? Comencio? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think it's probably safe to say the areas that you see it happening now aren't necessarily planned, as you no. said. So these weren't intentional engineering decisions exactly. to say we are going to allow upstream ponding to save downstream properties. There's a small window there to say you can channel the water or allow some upstream ponding, but always only within municipal road allowance and always very minor and short term. It's just small term retention. If you are getting into anything that's getting onto private property, you're more than likely looking into resizing the culvert or is there a need for retention or all the other steps that would get considered. So going forward, no, this wouldn't be a practice that we would be allowing that built into the design to say upstream ponding to affect any private property owner would be allowed. It would only be short-term retention. It would stay within the, the um, municipal road allowance and even allowing water to pond within the culvert <coughs> to deteriorate or, or lessen the life of the culvert itself. So it's not a long-term practice that's allowed. It's strictly a small window of opportunity you have if downstream properties, because of grade elevation um, topography, are affected by fast intensity high flow then the culvert can short term restrict that a little bit but not to affect anybody upstream all right now this is a point that I, that I can I can make again when we get to to your your report of activities because you referred to mm -hmm. to to uh, flooding at that point and I can I can reserve it till then or I can continue this discussion now mr mayor how, how would uh, we're we're knee deep in it, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, you, you, you make a point, and I don't have it in front of me because I haven't I haven't scrolled ahead, but I think that you had indicated in the other report, and and it's very relevant to this point, that the the, the rain that had occurred over the past weekend had not resulted in anything too untoward. But I I do know in making uh, a. a tour of my own, in fact, immediately after the, the strawberry festival, because it was raining that day, looked around before, before the, the festival at, at various locations that I know uh, were, uh, were, were at risk, and then I went around afterwards and, and noted that there was, in fact, quite a bit of flooding. Even though the, the rainstorm wasn't nearly as intense as those that we had last year, there were, there were areas that were, um, were, were kind of dramatically affected. Uh, in, in one case, I have to tell you, and this is without, uh, without any exaggeration whatsoever, uh, Biska, my, my, my wife and I watched a carp swim across the surface of the road. And that's, that, that, that's a pretty good indication that there's probably more water flowing at that location than, uh, than uh, was planned. And in fact, uh, in fact, we're, we're dealing with a, a, a flood. So I, I guess my question is with regard to, to what process are we going to go through to identify these areas where, where in fact, uh, culvert sizing may be the issue or maybe there's something else of a design uh, requirement uh, to, to contain water, to, to, to keep it within bounds. What, what are we going to be doing to identify these areas and deal with those specific locations uh, going forward, now that we have the report and understand culverts? Mitchell, can you can you and and maybe the councillor offline can tell us where we can get our next lunch? Well, I, I, I would, but um, <laughs> two pieces to that. So, um, staff, this I think you're referring to from the cow report. There was a note from the engineering group that they had done a review of a few of the critical washout areas from last year where we put in some erosion control. Mm -hmm. Those particular areas, they went back to see how it's working, and it was working. So this isn't Good. to say we don't have washouts still happening. It's us confirming we have to benchmark that what measures we took last year are working. Those were specific areas. I can't name them now, but that's what the point was, is we were able to go back and see that those things were working. 
going forward though, staff are very aware, I didn't get the CARP report, but very aware of where we do have some significant washout areas. Um, part of that is feeding into the roads group has that inventory and that's how they're prioritizing. We do have quite a few culverts on deck. There are some drainage areas that we just don't have a solution for yet and even those it's a matter of us working together to make sure we bring that forward so we can say okay how do we get help how do, how do we go forward from here so it's not getting ignored it's not that we're saying hey we're doing a great job let's just ignore it it's just we're chipping away at it making sure the small ones that we can do the small fixes are working and the larger ones come forward to you so you're aware and we get the resources we need to do the changes Okay, excellent. And, and, and it's really important, I think, that, that, that there continues to be an awareness that there is this issue across, across Pelham. Um, I, I'm, I'm taking from the report that you wrote that the, the, the specifications for culverts as, as um, recommended by the various authorities <coughs> that you, you, you quoted would be sufficient for the issues that we encounter here in, in Pelham, or is this a matter of having to to kind of upgrade them a little bit in order to meet with uh, meet our requirements. Uh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely, the the standard practices are more than suitable. They're conservative, and they would be fully applicable here. The issue that we're facing is not necessarily culvert sizing. It could be culvert sizing, culvert maintenance, but a lot of the drainage issues I'm finding are beyond the public works. Um, road drainage issue. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. private use of road drainage capacity for uh, land drainage. And it's trying to figure out ways with opening municipal drain doors, if necessary, to say how much of this is an issue of road drainage and the capacity not being there versus private properties using that capacity um, to drain their own properties or to drain to the neighbors next to them. Some of these are muddied and, and we have to work through those to try to figure out which ones are actual mm -hmm. the, the town's responsibility to correct versus the town's responsibility to mediate or, or to be part of the municipal, municipal drain process to mediate. That help, Councilor? Uh, it, 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 it does. It, it adds an, another dimension for sure mm -hmm. because almost certainly the vast amount of the water that hits the culvert and backs up has crossed private property mm -hmm. and is there as a result of uh, either the development that has occurred on that property which which has changed the basic conditions under which the water flows or it may even have to do with the, the extent to which people are or are not uh, draining the property that they they own but almost certainly in all of these areas that water would have been from upstream on private property so I, I'm I guess at a loss at this moment, and maybe it can be explained over time, uh, how we go about protecting the town whilst trying to get back toward the property owners and saying, but you're responsible for this because you have either developed or, or not taken care of things, and so you have a certain amount of responsibility. Maybe that's the municipal drain system and we need many more of them. I'm, I'm not sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One of my list of bylaws to bring forward in the future, top on the list that the manager of public works reminds me repeatedly is a drainage bylaw. Mm -hmm. We don't have one. Mm -hmm. okay. And having that might help it might. at least list out whose responsibility is what and how we can go forward with maintenance as well. Thank you. And, and, and I apologize for taking the time on, on this item. The, the report is an excellent report. The work that, that's being done by the department is excellent work. So this is an area of particular concern and has been for, mm -hmm. for some time and be very interested in it. But thank you very much. I appreciate the answers thank very you. much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. If I can add, it's also a very high, a big concern of staff as well. It's yeah, not good. being <clears throat> pushed under the carpet. <clears throat> Their hands are tied in some sense by what tasks they're able to complete in-house by budget um, and by trying to decide what the most effective use of their time. So we're focusing on the high priority critical items, trying to build inventories, recognize what those are and, and go forward. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And I can Others? tell you where the fishing is good anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> Others to the report, uh, Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. V three very brief uh, items. With respect to washouts, um, I'm sure Councillor Junkin has noticed this 
along um, Effingham Road where all the road work was done. Mm -hmm. uh, that area has been remediated several times. There are still great drop-offs there that if somebody moves too far over on the shoulder, they're going to lose their car. And we still have warning cones up along the ditch. Uh, I just draw that to your attention to perhaps have staff look at. Um, the second item, uh, Mr. Mayor, is uh, with respect to Port Robinson Road and uh, when uh, individuals can, in fact, hook up to the sanitary. I yeah. keep getting I, calls from constituents. and I'll allow it, but because it is also in the... the um, Director's report, but we are talking about culverts. So, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I thought I, we had done with no, culverts we're not and done we're with moving culverts. on. I'm sorry. I'll okay. I'll, so I'll you stand hold back that one, and let the other culverts one? go okay. forward. All right. Thank you. Anything further on culverts before we get to <laughs> Councillor Junkin? Uh, just one more uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the uh, director. Uh, engineering practices. Uh, I take it that uh, these engineering practices are updated, um, if not yearly. Um, quite often, and, and I'm wondering uh, myself, do these engineering practices uh, take into, um, uh, take into uh, concerns that we, if indeed climate change is happening, uh, uh, do they take into concern that we, instead of getting two inch rains, we may instead uh, be getting four inch rains? And, and do they, uh, do they have the culvert sized to that? Or is it to maybe rains of 20 years ago where you only get an inch? And, and that's why I brought this up mm -hmm. to begin with, was because I think that when you say you're oversizing a culvert, may result in unnecessary cover on road grading costs. But I contend that if we don't go and, and put a great a greater safety factor in our culverts than what is required, <coughs> I'm wondering then if we aren't indeed not doing due diligence going forward and that's why I brought this up I, I see you say oversight of culvert, culvert may result in unnecessary cover and road grading costs but the cost of an 18 inch culvert as compared to a 24 inch culvert as I stated is minimal and I really I really think that uh, and I, I guess answer me those questions if you could are the engineering uh, protocols uh, updated uh, on a frequent basis? Madam Director. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, they are. So they are very aware that even though the storm, whether it's a 25 or 50 year storm that you're referring to, um, the overall rainfall might not be changing. The climate change group is very aware that the intensity of that rainfall is, is much greater. So we might still get 50 millimeters of rain, but we'll get it in one hour instead of five. So the overall classification of whether it's a 20, 25 or 50 year storm might not change, but they're wary that the intensity does, which affects then your downstream. So uh, yes, they're aware. Yes, it's being incorporated into the standards. Last year I attended um, sort of a traveling roadshow that the ministry put on saying, this is where we're heading, adjusting for those intensities, things like stormwater detention ponds, um, adjusting the freeboard of the ponds, because now you, even though you have the capacity over a 10 year or a 10 hour storm, it might not be able to handle the first two hours of that if it's coming down that heavily. So they're very much aware and making those adjustments and then those roll out to the municipalities as we, as we can use it. Okay. Yep. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Councillor. Anything further on? This culvert report. I do want to mention, uh, direct, Madam Director, that it's a it's a great report, very comprehensive. So thank you very much, and I appreciate the the nuance that came out in the conversation about uh, drainage of roads versus drainage of lands. Um, so I think it's it's it very interesting. I think you know, with the drainage superintendent here, that is very interesting because when I was thinking about it, it was more about the private property drainage affecting the roads and the culverts across the roads. So thank you for that. Um, Obviously, this is a, is a high priority for your uh, for your department, and I would just there are a large number of um, the uh, steel pipe corrugated steel pipe culverts, as you call them. Um, do, do we have a plan in place, or are you developing as part of this a plan in place to replace more than the five per year average, uh, or the lar or the 
you know, the critical ones. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? We do. We are. We have an inventory that we kind of just dusted off this month, and with that, it's, I, from what I understand, it's just been a standard amount that's been carried forward for budget, and it's whatever we can squeeze in. Mm. This year in budget considerations, we thought we would say, okay, let's look at what's critical mm. and where that compares to what the budgeted amount is. So that might shift slightly this year, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. I, I'm pleased with that answer because I think it is a more critical question for us, as uh, Councillor Junkin pointed out about climate change is, is here, uh, so thank you. And then the final, I just, just want to mention, I do appreciate uh, that the drainage bylaw is one of your priorities. Um, I have, a, have had a conversation with um, the lawyer for the City of Burlington who indicated that they had used that bylaw and they were very pleased to have that bylaw when they were hit with that uh, crazy rain that they had last year. So it may be a tool that we might need in our... Uh, in our toolbox in order to help deal with this issue. So thank you for your ongoing work with this. If there's nothing further, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Papp, the committee of the whole received the June 2015 Public Works and Utilities Report for information. I'm going to turn to Councillor Kersey. You had talked about one of the items. Why don't you go ahead, sir? Um, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. I apologize for getting okay, off track there. I was just so excited. Out. <laughs> anyway, uh, the question I was raising I was carping uh, about it, but go ahead. <laughs> with respect to uh, the sanitaries on Port Robinson Road, I have a number of constituents who are chomping at the bit to connect, yeah. and I receive almost weekly phone calls about when that will be allowed and what the process was, and no wonder the director <coughs> could bring us up to date on that. Sure, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have been given the closed circuit TV inspections. Um, the engineering group is reviewing the results of those just to make sure they're okay, that there are no deficiencies. Uh, I was also forwarded the estimated cost to connect, which was new for me. I didn't realize that this had already been worked out from the um, design engineer, I guessed an estimated cost uh, of a user pay for the connection fee, um, there's the building permit fee to connect, but also a, a user pay to connect to the sanitary, and it had a cost breakdown, so we're reviewing that. This is kind of picking up old pieces to make sure that it makes sense, and then that cost, um, plus the building permit cost, we were going to build into a small newsletter um, once we know the CCTV inspection is complete and distribute that to the residents that are waiting to connect so they know what's involved, that they have to contact the region for decommissioning their septic bed and just all the steps and what the cost would be. As a follow-up, Mr. Mayor, do you have a timeline on that, uh, Madam Chair? Uh, I can give you one. The uh, CCTV is being looked at this week by the engineering group. The costs I already have, we've got to review it in light of Summerfest because uh, the engineering group gets sucked into that. I would say not the next week, but the week after we would be able to say we've, we've got something finalized and we could ask for Anna's help in putting together some sort of one-page communication to the residents. Okay, so we're looking by the end of July. July, yep. Okay. Okay. Anything else to that issue, Port Robinson? Sewer? Just, just a question. You said that there's a user pay. I'm confused because I thought we were doing this, and the and there was like in in other sewer hookups, it's sort of a frontage fee. But in this case, the municipality was was taking it up, and it was covered by development charges. So you're not talking about a, the user pay being a per foot cost, are you? I don't believe so. And that's yeah. why this kind of got thrown at me sideways, it was from the UCC engineer who said you're aware that this was all worked out and what the cost to the resident would be. So that, he's emailed me, honestly I haven't okay. opened it and looked at it yet, but I can make sure that I, I review that and get a better understanding of where these costs have okay. come from. It was basically the cost to extend uh, a lateral from oh. the main to the property line oh, okay. to service them particularly, not the cost of the trunk main. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Anything further on that? Okay, thank you. Councillor Kersey, you have uh, a third item, I guess? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, it's with respect to street cleaning. Um, 
I've had some people express some concerns about the street cleaning this year and particularly about cleaning streets where there's a lot of parking on main streets like like Pelham Street and what have you. I wonder if we can build that into the contract in the future that that there be notice of when those various streets are going to be cleaned so people can be given notice to keep their cars off the streets so we can do a more effective job. If that's if that's something that can be built in. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I I can't see why it couldn't be. Uh, if it's a co if it's a notification done by the contractor, we would have to pay for that extra time. If it's something done by staff, uh, if we could maybe keep it simple, something on the website and maybe in the paper or something, rather than hand delivering notices to every home. Um, but it certainly wouldn't be impossible. Okay, thank you. I think that would be useful, uh, even if we take the simplistic approach to start with and put it up on the website and. You know, maybe uh, as we open, we become more open and transparent and effective in our in our Bill. communication. If, if we could maybe incorporate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Others. Um, just one question about Port Robinson Road, and, and it's more the drainage issue. There was some concern with <coughs> some flooding in a particular area. It's not really in your report, but. I understand you're continuing to work on that with the uh, contractor, is that correct? That is. I have a meeting with the engineer tomorrow to discuss what happened there. Yeah, okay. We haven't assumed any of that infrastructure yet, so it's on him to prove to us what happened. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We may be receiving a formal letter to that effect, so okay. from the property owners. Thank you. Anything further? Oh, Councillor Riviak. Yeah, just a quick one, Mr. Mayor, if I might. With regard to... Um, contracts and RFPs, you indicate that there might be some reallocation of funding because of some studying that needs to, to go on in one area. And you were contemplating uh, uh, reallocating that, that money to a portion of Foss Road. I just wanted to be sure that that uh, the stretch that, that included the actual intersection between Foss and Church, that there's a considerable amount of slumping right in the middle of the intersection. So just, just wanted to, to to be sure that you were aware of that. Mr. Murder, I am aware. I believe that that intersection is still a requirement under um, development agreement. There's a responsibility for the developer to come back and correct that intersection. Hmm. So it's on my list. I just haven't opened that up yet to have a look and see what the nature of that is. I understand the developer is aware of it. We just haven't pushed the issue hmm. for it to be completed. But Foss Road, separate issue. The intersection is okay. developer. Okay, understood. Thank you. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further? There being none, I'm going to call the question on the report. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you for your uh, great work and ongoing diligence. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Papp that committee, the whole, receives the issue summary report for information pertains to file application CP0115 regarding 1469 Pelham Street and the committee direct planning staff to prepare the execution bylaw and grant agreement for 1469 Pelham Street for Council's consideration. Questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two very brief questions uh, through you, uh, I guess to Mr. Zimmer. Um, I note that uh, the proponent is using vinyl siding on part of the building or intends to paint the vinyl siding that is there. I had understood that within the CIP, uh, noble materials had to be used as opposed to such things as aluminum siding and vinyl siding and uh, what have you. Could you bring clarity to that? Mr. Zimmer, are you prepared to help the councillor? Um, I can get that clarified. I do not have the answer right at the moment, though. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, councillor? Uh, the second question, uh, Mr. Mayor, also, uh, I just wondered whether the back is eligible the same as what a prominent side would be and um, whether we did in fact build that into the CIP document as well. I don't recall that. I think it was. But, but I, I couldn't find my it, copy of the CIP or I wouldn't be asking these questions. Yeah. Sorry then. Again, I believe it is, but I will have it clarified. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, I just wanted to comment. I like the rendition. Looking forward to it uh, being developed and it's great to see another uh, building in uh, this downtown uh, using the CIP funds to uh, update and spruce up their fa their facade. 100%. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? That motion's carried, and we look forward to getting that information. It's been moved by Councillor Kersey. The committee receives the issue summary report information as pertains to application file number PLC 0315 for part of block 4659M399 depicts part one to six um, municipally known as 73, 75, 77, 79, 89, 81, and 93 added place and further the council considers approving the part lock control exemption bylaw for part of block 46 depicted as parts one to six 59R15351 parts one to eight Municipally known as 73, 75, 77, 79, 89, 91, and 93. Avid, please. Questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to make a motion that we defer dealing with this matter until the uh, next regular scheduled uh, council meeting. Council or committee? Well, I think, council, so I think we can make it council. committee. So it would be. This PNP, PNP. Okay, so you do, you would postpone consideration this until the mm -hmm. July twentieth PNP meeting. Correct. Okay. Is uh, there's no seconder required? Are we ready for the deferral motion? All those in favor? Any right. opposed? Just also, a question on that. Should there be some direction in that? Uh, you know, we're just deferring it. Is 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 there a reason for the deferral that staff needs to investigate? Right. I think uh, basically we're we're trying to get some clarity on. I think we've dealt with this before, and it's the same same issue that we discussed in council, uh, uh, councilor. Uh, so we'll get some clarity on whether, in fact, we did deal with this. And so the same direction that we gave correct. there applies correct. here. Okay, that's, correct. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you for asking for that, councilor. Yeah, thank for you the for clarity. That. Okay. Let's vote uh, again now with that knowledge uh, for real this time. All those in favor. Any opposed? That motion or the, for the deferral is carried unanimously. Postponed. Thank you. I used deferral. I apologize. Madam Clerk, it's been moved by Councillor Durley that Committee of the Whole received the June 2015 Planning and Development Services Report for information. Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With regard to the drainage superintendent update, which I believe is part of that report, uh, there's a reference to the Keenan drain. There will be a report and resolution coming forward to Council regarding this drain. I take it that that uh, report was the one that we looked at yes. earlier. I'd like to just uh, talk for a moment at, about the other end of the drain, the Keenan drain, the, uh, okay. the outlet, and, and perhaps uh, uh, ask um, our, our drainage superintendent what plans there might be in place for uh, some maintenance or, or cleaning of the Keenan drain, particularly at, at the at, at the far end, the uh, the outlet end, which the lower end, the lower end, okay, which is which is creating some significant problems to to residents in that area. Mr. Zimmer, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, we are looking at it at the same time as we're looking at the whole drain. It will be addressed in the report to have it cleaned, or we could do it under maintenance, in which I was going to do this spring until this all advised uh, signing the petition. So we will be addressing the whole drain. Councillor, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I recognize that there's a schedule and, and it needs to be kept, but I wonder whether uh, whether some effort might be put into just exceptionally taking a look at the lower end of that drain to see whether there aren't any issues that are uh, that, that might critical. be need, that might be more critical and might need some attention earlier. Uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to you, uh, yes, I did walk the bottom part of the drain, and there are some issues, but I didn't think there there were anything that was really lodging water up for a considerable amount of time. Yes, in the heavy flows, it does back up somewhat, but there is uh, water movement through the drain. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zimmer. Councillor, you yeah, satisfied? I, I, I guess it's that water backup that, uh, that we're concerned about. That's what causes the, uh, the damage and the problems. And whether a cleaner drain might be able to move that water faster and therefore alleviate that problem, I, I don't really know, but that's, there's definitely some some issue there that that needs to be looked at. Thank you. It, it sounds like Mr. Zimmer made an appraisal of the lower end of the drain, and under his estimation, said that it's something that can be dealt with under the process that council just approved. So I believe that's what he said. Anything further, councillor? 
I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anything further to the uh, to the report, planning report, Councillor Kersey? No, I don't have to talk to the Keenan drain. No, you don't have to talk about the Keenan drain. You can talk about the North Pelham drain <laughs> or, or other parts of the report. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of, of points. Um, first one is the graphic representation of the statistics shows that the um, June we exceeded last year, but the statistical results that are reported in the chart show the exact opposite. I wondered which one was correct. So for example, it shows 30 permits in 2015 mm -hmm. and 49 and 14, but when you look at the graphic representation of that, it's, it's showing that in June of 15, we exceeded what we did in June of 14. Yes, I can uh, see now what you're saying. I wonder if those numbers got switched, but I will look into it and okay. tell you, but I think maybe they got turned around. I wondered if that was yes. the case. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I noted in the paper through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, that a developer is advertising the sale of condominiums on number one, Highway 20. And uh, yet we've not seen anything at the council table here with respect to that development, whether it required, and it may be that it didn't require any rezoning or anything of that nature. Uh, but in fact, it's on an area that's the oldest building in in Font Hill, um, representing the old tavern or the, the um, uh, hotel, if you will, roadhouse, that helped to establish Font Hill as, as a place. So I just wondered whether there's a planned report coming forward with respect to that, uh, where we are in the process. Um, he's advertising them for sale. We haven't seen a site yeah. plan or anything of that nature. So I just want to get some clarity on that, Mr. Okay. Mayor. I, I think there were some discussions with some former staff, uh, and I think the CAO is prepared to give us additional information, Mr. CAO. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you're correct uh, in that there has been no formal planning applications made on the, on the, on the property. My understanding is they're testing the market for price point. Um, which is something that I guess they can do. Um, I am anticipating that the uh, proponent will be setting up or requesting a meeting with me to review the development and proceed down the road of formal planning applications and approvals as required. Just as a follow-up, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I presume then that staff will take into consideration the heritage significance of that building, whether it and my thought was that even if it had to be demolished, that there would be an opportunity for the Historical Society or the Heritage Committee, if it's reconstructed, to have a look in there and see if there were elements that they would like to preserve and, and take out, uh, and at the very least to allow a placking of the, of the space that, similar to what we saw from Mr. Devarado, to designate that or to show that that was in fact a very important building within our heritage of this community. Okay. So. Thank you. Mr. CEO, any uh, comment on that? No, absolutely. We're, we're highly sensitive to the historical significance of the uh, the building and the role it played in the town's development. That will certainly be reflected in in the application regarding um, architectural control design, those sorts of issues. So. Thank you. And, and I just it harkens back to a presentation that Mrs. Lamb made several years ago, and I can't recall whether you were on council at the point, Councillor, where um, she asked that if, and she used that, property as an example that if there were changes at that property or other properties that members of the historical society might be able to take pictures mm -hmm. of what the inside might look like etc so um, that was somehow to be worked into some sort of highlight or touch on the GIS uh, of, of the properties so thanks, it sounds thanks. like sounds like the CAO is uh, is on top of that and thanks for the clarity staff will consider appreciate that. that okay thank you Others to the uh, planning and development report, Councillor? Just a very quick question for clarification. Lot 177 mm -hmm. uh, secondary plan projects. I wonder if they could clarify the date was, of the um, meeting. I was surprised by that as well. Uh, Mr. CAO, can you comment on the date and also this, because that's new. Um, it's. It's new in the context of, uh, I believe there may have been some wording that gave the wrong impression that there was a secondary plan that was going to be developed. 
what's going on is that the um, the urban planning requirements to connect the road system in that neighborhood and because it's been piecemealed over time have created uh, some significant obstacles in in designing a complete community block if you will um, one of the key things is that there is uh, several property owners uh, in that area uh, there's also a significant woodlot etc that we're not sure on the size and scope of completely and we wanted to do a tree audit on it um, and the the neighborhood uh, the adjacent property owners really have to form a, sort of a, a coalition, if you will, to um, proceed with the planning exercise that we still need to undertake. So the meeting is a one-off meeting. It's not about a secondary plan. It's simply to um, explain to the property owners uh, the, the, the situation and the process that they would have to go through in order to resolve some of these issues. Uh, it's also um, going to be an opportunity for us to request permission to enter onto private property and, and where applicable to do, uh, to do the necessary tree inventory to determine the size and the scope of the woodlot uh, in, that, in that area. Thank you. And the date? So I was Tuesday, unclear. July, it says Tuesday, July 8th, which it's either Tuesday, July 7th or Wednesday, July 8th Wednesday. or another date on the title. It's uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, Mr. Mayor. Wednesday, July 8th. And maybe um, if that's the case, I see Councilor Durley wants to comment, but maybe if that's the case, can the wording of this report be, I'll say, corrected? If you're saying it's it's yes. sort of incorrect, if that can be corrected for Council. Yes. Councilor Durley? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did receive a couple of phone calls about that from probably members of this coalition, and uh, they were very confused over what actually was going on by, by that wording in there. So the, the unfortunate part is that there is a... Uh, the physician recruitment thing that evening, so there's a conflicting mm -hmm. dates and, and uh, maybe difficult for some of us to attend both, obviously. So, but uh, definitely they are looking for a clarification, and I'm sure that the explanations that will be offered will will offer that clarity, and we should be looking forward to better communication in the future because it was quite confusing for uh, people that read it. I concur, Mr. Mayor. That was confusing. Um, However, I have great confidence Ron Palmer is coming down and we'll be uh, wor working with the residents. I'm sure that they'll have full clarity with okay. uh, his expertise at the table. Thank you. <coughs> Anything else? Planning and development report. I do want to comment, and I did uh, mention to the uh, building inspectors, and I mentioned the CBO earlier today, one of the um, pieces of information we get is the average number of days to issue a permit. <coughs> Council will recall when we started tracking that, it was close to the... Um, timeline which is 10 days now it's gone down for home to seven mm -hmm. and small building below the uh, the guideline from the province at 12 so uh, kudos to all of the staff uh, and a tremendous number of inspections that are being done but very very efficiently efficiently obviously so I wanted to uh, highlight that and <coughs> celebrate that success and uh, thank staff yep. thank, thank you, you Mr. Mayor. We'll pass that on to my staff thank you mr. Zimmer thank you any further there, uh, Councillor Papp. Seconds. I just wanted to extend through Mr. Mayor to you, uh, Mr. Zimmer, and uh, Julie for the excellent on behalf of uh, Councillor Junk and the, the uh, work and conversation conducted with the local developers about the uh, site plan manual. Very well done. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Papp. Thank you, Mr. Zimmer and staff. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Fire services report moved by Councillor Kersey that we receive it for information. Questions, comments? Just Council Pop, go ahead, please. Uh, just very quickly, I read in there and just goes to show you that even though many times our fire services are dealing with fire, but in fact they revived the patient who had suffered a major mm -hmm. uh, heart attack. That should be noted. One life saved is one life that we appreciate so to the team uh, excellent work it just goes to show you what can happen thank you very much councillor chief thank you was this the one that the uh, fire station two they ran to with the defibrillator is that correct yeah it was, it was actually a very fortunate call these uh, it was probably less than one percent of survival rate was something like this and there happened to be uh, three guys there was a one guy from each station having a meeting there 
and the guy was at the horseshoe pits at uh, oh, son of a gun. Centennial. Centennial. And uh, he was VSA when they got there, but he survived. They did a quadruple bypass. Yep. He's, son of a gun, eh? Yeah. So awesome. he's one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Yeah. Guys did a good job. Thank you. And it's, well, it's, he's lucky, but it's be because of the training of mm -hmm. fire staff, uh, part time firefighters, and and their fast response. So please pass along council's appreciation to them. Yep. And I note that the paramedic as well, who's a firefighter at station three was involved in that. And there he was that evening, uh, working with kids doing the fishing, uh, fishing pond there. So just carry on. So they're always ready to, to react. So mm -hmm. please pass along our thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I was looking for Councillor Rubiak's carp. Did you say the carp? <laughs> <laughs> Others Lucky to the fire. <laughs> And uh, bylaw report. Thanks very much uh, for the stats as well, following along with that. So thank you. Going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is been moved by Councillor Akersi that Committee of the Whole receive the June 2015 Human Resources Department report for information. Questions, comments? Madam Director, I'm gonna I'm gonna segue into this. You gave us some. Is all members of the council got this. Can you just briefly speak uh, to this, please? Certainly, through you, Thank Mr. You. Mayor. Um, this is actually uh, the follow-up. Last year, there was an interdepartmental team that actually that laid the foundation for the uh, employee handbook. So I'd like to give credit to that team for providing me with, as I said, a great foundation in which to. Uh, based the rest of this book on. So um, this has really taken up a large chunk of the last two months of my time, just really reviewing other examples of what I think a great employee handbook looks like uh, and melding it with what the team had provided uh, me as my foundation in creating this document you have in your hand now. Thank you very much, Ms. Gilbert. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see questions, comments. Maybe you haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, Councillor? I took a quick look through it, Mr. Mayor. I think it's incredibly good. And um, just just looking through it, I mean the the you're getting a smile on our director from that. So. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> it's a good smile. I like it. Um, lo looking at it and, and remembering the the work we did with regard to personnel policies and seeing them in here uh, laid out in a way that can be that's clearly uh, accessible and, and understandable. I, I think it's a great job, and uh, I'm really pleased to see it. Thank, Thank you very much, Councillor. Thank you, Madam Director. Questions, comments to that? Okay, thank you. And to the other components of the uh, Director's report. Councillor Kersey, I think I saw you first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very briefly. Pop, and there might be others. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. He's Very good. briefly, uh, I just wanted to say I'm so pleased to see a succession plan being developed and developing criteria around that and how we can best develop the talent pool that we have and draw from that talent pool to hire in internally and to promote people uh, that have the talent internally. I think this is a great, great step, and it, it certainly will speak to the, the uh, sustainability of our community and, and, and the uh, staff that we have here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Others? No. I did attend a, um, a hydro conference wearing my hat as hydro, and we had a, a Great session on talent uh, there as well on talent succession. So I'm going to pass it along to the director uh, in addition to this. So I think, um, but thank you very much for your work on this and um, echo the comments of Councillor Kersey. So without further ado, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Madam Director. It has been moved by Councillor Papp, the Committee of the Whole, received the June 2015 Recreation, Culture and Wellness Department report for information. Comments, questions, very, very busy time of year for this uh, department. Councillor Papp? Very quickly through you, Mr. Mayor. Can I request that at the July 20th meeting that you bring us an update on the Junior B team's activities for the past year? It's been one year since we signed that contract, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to elaborate. I would be curious to know who attended, how many people attended, et cetera, and what the plans are for the upcoming year. I see the new coach was announced, so uh, I would uh, really would like to uh, get uh, some sort of, I guess, a report, to say the least. Okay, uh, I'm 
looking to the director, and, and I think in terms of timing. Well, how about uh, Lots of I'm, I'm not coming I, up in July? No, I'm so. not asking. Okay, just but I want like a report on the activities we entered into a new phase. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to get an update, whether it's July, August, on what has happened in the past year and what we're planning for in the upcoming year. Thank you. And that's being done by design so that we get ready. Madam Director. Okay, August. Do you want to comment? Uh, just through you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, um, Mr. Toplow has contacted us and he has requested to be a delegate on June, July 20th. For what purpose? To, to make a presentation? Oh, to do a so it sounds like he's, he's prepared to do that? Is the same? The same okay. idea? Correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Others to... Nope. Recreation, Culture, and Wellness. Again, very, very busy. Lots of activities coming up. Thank you uh, to you and your staff for putting this together along with some great uh, dedicated volunteers. Look forward to these events and pray for great weather. Councillor Pat. And just to compliment, you know, I just goes to show, you know, we, much as we've discussed, and I know we're running out of, with the ice facilities, I like the eye off ice facilities. Lacrosse stuff mm -hmm. is coming back, so these facilities will offer other opportunities for other groups to use. That's critical. And that is critical. It thank is you. Critical. All right, thank you. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Council, I think, unfortunately, we do have to have another motion, which is in order to move by Council Gurley that the rules of procedure contained in the Talon Palin procedure bylaw be suspended and that the specific meeting curfew time of 10 p.m. BN is hereby waived and that the remainder of the business on the agenda be continued or until such matters have been concluded or until a set time of 10.30, whichever occurs first. Are we ready for the question? All those in favor? I'll be done Any opposed? Ten, ten motion five. is carried. We'll, that's only for committee. We may need another one for. Can we still start, Council? Uh, it's been moved by Councillor Durley. Committee whole receive the June 2015 Clerk's Department report for information. Clerk, <clears throat> thank you for your report. Questions, comments? Going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Been moved by Councillor Ribiak. The committee of the whole received the Chief Administrative Officer's monthly report for June 2015 for information. Councillor Papp. Just a quickly through uh, Mr. CEO. Uh, I noticed well spring. Um, I heard some different, actually good news about the design and size of that facility. Maybe you can update us later. Um, I heard a different size being proposed, which was actually, I was very pleased to hear something that they're going from 7,000 to 10,000 square feet. I, I think the initial was six and uh, it's yeah. 10,000. So maybe the next time you get an update, it'd be interesting to, if we could contact Ms. Mantini to come in and just give us an, an update on what they're doing. It's very, very positive. Very good. Okay, thank you. Any others to that? We'll look forward to an update, perhaps uh, August, September. August, does, yeah, mm -hmm. no rush. Maybe that can be direction that we talk to her. Um, others on items? Um, just, so, no, uh, oh, never mind, time's up. <laughs> no, uh, I feel like I'm at the hockey game. Um, the library operating agreement, just fill me in what's... It's just give me just a, like a we, flavor for what's going on there. Well, we have friend. the library operating agreement drafted, uh, Mr. Right. Mayor, and it, it's agreed in principle amongst the librarian, CEO, and myself. Okay. Um, I was planning to bring it to council uh, immediately. Uh, he's asked to be deferred until uh, the um, board meets so that the, you know, so the council and the board can look at it concurrently as opposed to council looking at it and then the board okay. looking at it a couple months later. That's, that's fine. Thing. So that's that, all that I need to know. For it. Okay. I'm glad that's coming forward. And I also see that um, work is might come forward on July 20th meeting regarding Maple Acre Library. Yeah. So that's oh, good yeah. news as well. We need to hear. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Anything further? Lots of great work, uh, Mr. CEO, as well. Got 90 seconds. Thank you. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion hey, is carried. Like, like 
And it's been moved by Councilor Papp that this regular meeting may the whole be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday, August 4th, 2015, unless sooner called by the mayor. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, Mike.